Live from the Outpost Studios in Columbus, Ohio, you're listening to All Natural Being with Brian Brody. Brought to you by IPMNation.com. Get ready for the gong heard round the world. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. All Natural Being with Brian Brody is designed to shake your sense of self to the core. It's full contact psychology with an empowering twist, a philosophical loofah for your soul. For those of you not ready or comfortable releasing your inner superhuman, listener discretion is advised. Here's your host, Brian Brody. Evening and welcome. I know I say this every night because it's just it's it's hard for me to believe, but welcome to the three hundred and seventieth episode. Let me click this. I'm supposed to be reminded. I saw the time. Add this. Oh, look how that goes. We go that over there, and then we throw this up here. The three hundred and seventieth episode of the number one rated show on IPMNation.com. You're into all natural being, and just seconds ago, the gong heard. Around the world broadcast as it happens, thanks to our good friends at Telestream's Wirecast, is broadcast as it happens right here on IPMNation.com the, for the video and also the live multicast here on Facebook over at AllNaturalBeing.com. And I think Wayne tells me we're into both the apps now, both Apple and whatever the other one is that is an Apple Android. But however you come to hang with us, we're always pumped to have you here live from the transitional radio uplink. In beautiful Columbus, Ohio, I hear pretty rainy in Cuenca, Ecuador today, so I guess I'm glad to be in Columbus, Ohio. With rebroadcasts on iTunes, iHeartRadio, Spotify, you know, all the other usual suspects. Greetings wherever you are. Here in the Garden of the Mortals, the labyrinth of life itself. Because this is your shot at running the table as you see fit. You don't need permission from anybody. How do we ever sign up for that permission to lead our lives the way we want to? Here's your chance to ignore all them and to be mouth-watering to yourself. It's in your blood. Now you've just got to get your mind to remember. That's why we're here, to be your amnesia buster, to be your squeegee, to be your friendly blue force, always putting your heart's highest priority top of the list, reinstalling and reinstating the true wit, wisdom, and I dare say the wallop, because it is a wallop of your inner whisper, rebooting your robust, finding your ferocious, commencing your counterpunch. That's what I love about it. All in time to outbrutal the brutal in the cut and, shuffle, the cut and shuffle that fate can deal us on a daily basis and to bring your own bold once and for all. Everyone's waiting on it. Everyone's going to dig it when you do. But before we hit it this evening, hello to my friends here in the United States and Canada, Mexico, the UK, my good friends in Ecuador, China, the Philippines, Brazil, India, Australia, Germany, Italy, and France, Nigeria, Turkey, Japan, Singapore, Thailand, Belgium, Sweden, Israel, South Africa, Egypt, and Puerto Rico, Kenya, the Netherlands, Iran, Colombia, Greece, Ireland, Argentina, Peru, Austria, Poland, to those joining us from all over the globe, it's great to have you with us. I truly am fired up to be driving, as I say every time, to be driving your bandwagon, to be your virtual hitchhiker. And if you're on the go, you know what I love about riding shotgun? Getting to hang with you. As we talked about last evening, getting to hang with the authentic you, the real you, not the watered down, tepid you. So what are we waiting for? Here's your opportunity to mortal up. What do you say? Let's go kick in some doors. And, you know, I was just talking to Wayne uh, briefly before we went 
before I came on the air because he always calls to make sure that, you know, everything's going good and this and that. And I was just talking to him about it. And I didn't want to start tonight's show or get too far into tonight's show without um, a couple different shout outs. One, a thank you to all the, the firefighters, the paramedics, the first responders, all the volunteers that are doing what they can to help the people displaced by the current round of wildfires out in California. And though you and I could get into the political debate of whether we should have a prescribed burns or whether we shouldn't have prescribed burns, in other words, that, that's not what this is about right now. It's a thank you to all the people that put their life on the line to help save other people. And also a shout out to the families that have just has to be going through just a, a hellacious Thanksgiving weekend, heading into a Thanksgiving weekend here in the United States. Some sleeping in tents, some not knowing, some still missing loved ones. I saw an interview a little earlier with members of a, of a football team, like over 100 members and coaches on the team. Every one of them on the team lost their house in the fire. So here's a shout out to all the people right of bang. All the people that run towards the sound of need, that run f- towards the sound of people calling for help and do what they can to put their life on the line in order to protect someone else's. And then also, as I say, a shout out to the people. Look, you and I, I a lot of my friends here on the post, you know, I've, I've, I've been very blessed to sleep in tents. I've been very blessed to sleep in the ground in some of the most amazing terrain, some of the uh, uh, temperature and terrain. But I, I made the decision to get a thermarest and get a sleeping bag and get my tent. And, 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 you know, I used to say all the time on TV, I'm taking the roughing it out of roughing it with my gear. I, I made that decision to go out and sleep on the ground and live in tents. But you have families. You have tent communities that are popping up in Walmart parking lots in different places of California because the people have displaced by the fire. So I just, I really wanted to make mention of that before we got, before we kick it off this evening is that it's totally different when I say, yeah, it's 30 below zero. I'd love to sleep outside. Oh yeah, I've got a bivy. Oh, I can sleep in the every, I can do this, I can do that. But I made a conscious decision. I can't even imagine, um, especially if you're not prepared for that kind of lifestyle, right? I just, I just dig that lifestyle. But if you're not prepared for it, just what a, what a heartache it could truly be. So I wanted to make mention uh, of those folks uh, tonight. And then I'll get over in the thread. And then once we're here in the thread, let me see if I can turn the volume. Hey, look at that. I made it. Uh, get over here in the thread, say hello to some people, and then get right into our topic tonight because there's been a lot of discussion about it already throughout the day on the phone, on Twitter, here on Facebook, with friends of mine about, well, what do you mean anxiety is ours? Isn't anxiety a countering force? Yes, it's a, a countering force but it's not contrary to you. So we're going to go over that this evening, what you can do to beat back anxiety, right? Because it's not natural when you mortal up. It's one of those things that you can do to make sure that you can beat back anxiety. You can do it in as little as 20 minutes a day, right? No, no charge and there's, there's nothing to sell. I don't, but I want to go over uh, quickly that concept because I hear all these people today go, oh, you know, Thanksgiving. And I can remember back from the days of being a patrolman well, let me say hello to everyone first. Rita, good evening. Candace, good evening. Henry, I know, pretty rainy down there, I heard. Wayne, not quite yet with Apple, but soon. Oh, thank you, Wayne. Okay, so I guess we're not quite there with the Apple app yet, but if any, if Wayne's on it, so if it can be done, he will figure out a way. Thank you, Wayne, very much. Deb from New Hampshire, good evening. Thank you for the little, uh, I think it's is a gift for Jeff earlier about the water. Thank you very much for that. Candace. Yes, I'm with you, Candice. Uh, Shout out to all of them. Kenneth, nice to see you. Thank you, brother, for joining us here at All Natural Being this evening. Marcellus, nice to see you back. Brother Wallman, nice to see you back as well. Good evening to you both. And what we're talking about anxiety is that we've learned to be anxious. We've learned about anxiety. We've learned about the fight or flight syndrome and what happens when we allow ourselves to be hijacked by the very chemicals that our own body produces in terms of fight or flight. So here's what I've found that works. Let me say quickly to hello to Matt. Matt, thank you, and Jenny, and everyone at IPM Nation for everything you do to be able to get our shows up here. And as I mentioned earlier in the post, ipmnation.com slash TR now that stands for Transitional Radio Now. Thank you very much for everything uh, that you do at ipmnation.com. All right, so back to anxiety real quick. One of the things that I've found and it's left over from my days in triathlons or left over from my days in, of, of marathons. 
And as I was reminded today, it's really, you know, when you talk about the freshman 15, and I said, oh, well, I guess I'm subject to the tumor 20. And then I said, oh, yeah, but I've gone on the scales today, so maybe it's more like the tumor 25. Uh, and Ashley said to me today, well, candidly, if we're just, if we're telling the truth, it's probably more like the tumor 29, right? So, <laughs> So, right, you're saying, yeah, you ran marathons. Okay, but in any event, prior to the Tumor 29, back in the day, one of the things that I would do, especially living in Colorado, you say, oh, how are you going to run up this mountain? You do it just, just barely looking out over your feet. You never look up at what the grade is going to be. You never look out onto the course. You never say, oh, how much of the challenge is left in front of me, right? This race is going to kill me. You look out just ahead of your feet, just a few steps ahead. And then you look out a few steps ahead more and a few more and a few more and a few more. And before you know it, you've run the marathon. Before you know it, you have a top 20 finish in triathlons. But you focus where you are in this particular moment in all of time. So I wanted to study today. I wanted to break down anxiety. I wanted to break down being anxious. I saw this article early this morning that said it's like one of the number one diseases that we have going on in this country. And that, as I started to say earlier, left over from my days in law enforcement, do you know that there are more police calls to family homes during Thanksgiving, to to settle family disputes than I think any other time of year. Families get together, they come together for Thanksgiving, and you'd think, oh, they're arguing over the pumpkin pie, or, you know, maybe the stuffing has onions, or, you know, the gravy was too watery, whatever it is, right? Like gravy can be too watery, really. And can stuffing really have enough onions? Good evening, John. Nice to see you. Thank you for joining us here at All Natural Being, right? But people come together, and then there's a big brawl, and I heard this thing today. Oh, well, you know, um, what's there to be anxious about heading home for the holidays? Well, you're going to argue about politics. You're going to argue about this. You're going to argue about that. And I'm thinking, why not just be thankful, (laughs) right? Why not just cultivate that sense of gratitude? But I guess that'll be a different show altogether. Good evening to Heather. Heather, thank you so very much for joining us here at All Natural Being. But what we are talking about tonight is anxiety, how you and I can beat it. And as I said, in those little races, instead of being all worked up about, oh, the family feud that's going to go down on Thanksgiving, what you can do is realize that we're anxious because we tell the future what we expect from it. And I know I mentioned this earlier in the week, right? It happens to be one of my favorite, favorite things that I've probably ever written, but, you know, the, or I've written <laughs> Freudian slip that I've ever read. Yea, though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me, right? Yea, though I walk through the valley of shadow of death. And, you know, and then I, 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 I juxtapose that quickly with, you know, uh, thy will be done. Oh, but wait, oh, wait, time out, if you could. Thy will, but could I tweak it a little bit? I'd like thy will be done. Right? Or, or if you're a Taoist, the Tao follows its own path, right? The Buddhist, all life is suffering. But, but if I could, thy will be done. But could I tweak it a little bit? Could I sugarcoat it a little bit? Could I, right? Could I alter? It's, it's not thy will be done. Thy will be done. But can you run it past me first to make sure it's something that I'm going to sign up for, something that I'm agreeing to? So I realized early on the day that most of our anxiety, most of our anxiousness is we plan. We want an insurance policy because we want the future to work out exactly as we see fit. But I got to tell you, three years ago, I never thought that that I was going to go for a run, come back, not be able to taste the cannoli. And, you know, so many hours later, wheeled in an emergency room with all the neurosurgeons with their mouths wide open because they'd never seen a tumor, a brain tumor that size. Right? So I didn't know what laid ahead of me. and still don't know what's going to lay ahead of me. So what I'm saying is if we adopt a plan that thy will be done, and it doesn't have to be a, a religious connotation, but if we adopt a plan to just say, hey, whatever the universe throws at me, I'm going to do it. I don't know, BB. Okay, so what do, how does that help me volunteer my time to help? Okay, so what I do that helps me is volunteer time to help others. I think that's great, Heather. And all I'm going to suggest, in addition to volunteering to helping other people, is that instead of worrying about things, just go, yeah, you know what? The Tao follows its own path. Thy will be done. Whatever happens, happens. In, in the Muslim faith, it's inshallah. Whatever Allah wills. 
right? Whatever, whatever fate holds for us, we go, yeah, I'm not going to tuck my tail and run. I'm going to face it. I'm going to square my shoulders and I'm going to out brutal the brutal, whatever the brutal is. Because anxiety, being anxious is going, oh, well, what if this happens? What if that happens? What if I don't get A? What if I don't get B? What if I get a thumbs down? What if everyone leaves the thread at once? What if I get no followers on Facebook? What if, right? Or you could go, yeah, you know what? The hell with it. I'm just not going to buy into it. I'm going to live my life in this particular moment in all of time. I'm not anxious about the future because I couldn't give a crap about the future. I really couldn't in this particular moment in all of time. And that's why we're talking this evening about 20-minute victories. You can ask yourself, what can I do right now for the next 20 minutes? One seventy-second of our overall day. What can I do right now for the next 20 minutes to put my heart's highest priority top of the list? And the nice proof of this, and you've heard me say this before if we've been here, It is what it is. Absolutely, Heather. It is what it is. Rita says, worrying about things you have no control over is not productive, nor is playing the game what if. Absolutely. And we have control over so little, Rita, that my suggestion is within a 20-minute victory, you say to yourself, what can I do to put my heart's highest priority top of the list right now in this particular moment in all of time? And you know, I believe left over from my days as as an investigator, a criminal investigator, a detective, where I would go in and I go, look, there's got to be clues. There's got to be fingerprints. There's got to be boot prints. There's got to be tire prints. There's got to be the DNA left behind somehow. There's something here. There's a bad guy or a bad girl, right? I'm not mansplaining. A bad guy or a bad girl, they've left something behind at the crime scene. And I remember one of the most valuable teachers I've ever had uh, in, uh, in, in, in all walks of life, most certainly in law enforcement, but in all walks of life, Perk said to me one time, he goes, look, You just got to be smart enough to figure out what the bad guy or the bad girl left behind. So that was instrumental in me, but building this belief in my life that everything you've ever needed, you've always had. It's right with you in this particular moment and all of time. So for 20 minutes, instead of being anxious, instead of letting all those chemicals use you, right? Instead of letting the fight or flight chemicals hijack your own cognitive cockpit, instead of letting the endorphins, the adrenaline, play you like a sock puppet, what if you go, no, I'm not going to be anxious about the future. I'm going to take all this energy. I'm going to take my natural resources, my grit, my agility, my stamina, and I'm going to apply it in this particular 20-minute chunk in all of time. Marcel says, it's not about how many times you get knocked down. It's about how many times you get back up. I absolutely agree. Candace says, earplugs are good. (laughs) I'm with you. Heather says, brush it off. Pull up the big people pants and let it go. I'm with you. I'm all over. Apparently, my big people pants have just gotten bigger of late, if you listen to the people around me. But I'm with you. Turn the negative into a positive. In this particular moment and all of time, if you and I not, if we decide not to try to sugarcoat what the future is going to be, we don't want an insurance policy as to what the future is going to be. We go, look, whatever the future holds, I'm going to be able to deal with it. Mary says, which of you by taking thought can add one cubit unto his stature? Matthew 6, 27. I got you, Mary. Nice to see you. Thank you. Oh, love the shirt. Thank you for stopping by, all natural being. Heather, thank you very much. Where can I acquire one? Don't worry, we're working on that, Heather, but I'm I'm putting your name on the list right now, so as soon as I get the next batch, I'll bang one out to you. Right? So what we're talking about here, Mary, thank you very much. What we're talking about here is in this particular moment in all of time saying, no, what is there to be anxious about? All, everything that I'm going to need, like ingredients in baking, oh, oh, ingredients in making uh, 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 stuffing, right? If, you, if you're getting ready for Thanksgiving dinner here in the States and you go, oh, I've got all of this right here. Here's the, the, here's the breadcrumbs. Here's the this or that. You've got all the ingredients. Well, why can't life be like that? Why can't every ingredient that you need be right here in this particular moment at all of time? All you and I have to do is mortal up. All you, I, you and I have to do is slough off some of the amnesia, some of the veneer. Lee commented last night, some of the veneer. Right? Some of the spackle, some of the paint, some of the shellac, enough brain shellac. But if we peel away all of that, which is why I always thought, but, you know, I get in trouble a lot of time. I was talking to Mary about this the other day. I get in trouble sometimes when they go, well, you know, what do you think of the message? And I go, look, one of the toughest guys, you got to admit, if you look at Jesus, if you look at, uh, most certainly if you look at Buddha, if you look, uh, you know, anyone that can walk into the desert for 40 days and 40 nights, you got it going on. 
right? You know what it takes in order to be able to survive. You're not going to worry about it. You're going to go, hey, whatever I'm confronted with in any particular moment in time, then I'll just plain deal with it. Buddha wasn't all worried. He goes, eh, let me find a tree to sit under, right? Joseph Smith wasn't worried. Eh, I'll walk into the woods of Palmyra, New York. Whatever happens, happens, right? And you look at Jacob, you, you, you know, you look at Muhammad, you look at any of them that walked out into the middle of the adventure at hand, not worried about the outcome, but like, no, I'm squaring my shoulders. Whatever this moment has to teach me, I'm going to learn the lesson built in. I'm going to steep, right? Like tea leaves in warm water. I'm going to steep myself in this particular moment and all of time. To Candace's point, so if you do that, if you steep yourself in the moment, if you just immerse yourself, what is there to be anxious or dread or overthinking, to, to Candace's point? I said, the, I said the other day here on Facebook that the best thing that you can do to learn meditation is develop the art of underthinking. Everyone, oh, he's an overachiever. I want to be an underachiever. Oh, he's an overthinker. I want to be an underthinker. Joseph says, improvise on the fly with faith. Joseph, I couldn't agree with you more. That's the whole, yea, though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I fear no evil, right? Because in whatever you're going to need, whatever you need to materialize in that particular moment, if we're not always worried about we're going to tell the future how to respond to what we want, as Joseph says, you improvise on the fly. It's all impromptu. It's improvisation, which is why I think that form of comedy is so powerful. Dana, if you're listening, I got your message late in the day. I'll give you a ring. I know you're busy. Uh, I don't want to say what I was going to say because you're enjoying uh, an evening somewhere else. But then, I, you know, I, I, I won't out you if you don't want everyone else to know where you are. I won't mention uh, where you are. And I, hope it's, I hope it warms up for you there. Mary says, battling anxiety is one of the spiritual battles. You can fight. And I think you can fight it, Mary, because you, got, you just have to at some point go, what am I being anxious about? I'm doing this to me. And if I'm doing it to me, then I'm going to knock it off. I'm going to mortal up. I'm going to live in this particular moment in all of time. And there's all kinds of battles that be going on in my brain. I don't need to add anxiety to it. I don't need to have to have an attitude. Thank you very much, Heather. Thank you very much, as I appreciate you. Right? But we don't have to cultivate the attitude of anxiety. So how do we do that? And just try this for the next 20 minutes. If you don't believe me, just try it. For the next 20 minutes, go, yeah, I'm not going to worry. David Ray Bowman has asked me many times before, even long before I started doing this show, long before episode 370, the whole thing about the BEST acronym. And I said the BEST acronym stands for breathe in, exhale your name, scan the situation that you're in, and then take action. As Candace says, I've honestly been working on controlling my breathing. Well, that's the beauty of the best acronym, I think. Right, Candace, other than the fact that I wrote it, which I think makes it, you know, somewhat suspect. But in any event, for me, the beauty of the best acronym is to breathe in. If you're in a panic situation, if you're anxious about something, David Ray, there you are, brother. How you feeling? Hey, look, look, I need to make sure that this isn't going to interfere with our trip to Rainier next year. Ah, uh, you thought I forgot about that, huh? So you breathe in, right away your body goes, wait a minute, how panic can he be? How stressful can this be? How anxious can he be? How anxiety-ridden can he be? He's taking the time to take a deep breath. And I mean, putting your lungs through the paces, right? Not, you know, not just shallow little breathing, right? But putting your lungs through the paces, draw in a big breath. And then the E in best acronym is exhale. What do you got to do? You got to exhale your name. And people go, well, of course I know my name. It shouldn't. Very good, David. I'm very excited about that. Good evening, Sarah. Thank you for joining us here at All Natural Being. Please, everyone, tell everyone up in the North Country we said howdy. But right, when you exhale your name, people say, well, I know who I am. Well, in a moment of anxiousness, in a moment of dread, in a moment of fear, I've interviewed people that don't know their own names. So when we breathe in, putting our lungs through the paces, we pull in a full, full lungs of air, and then you exhale. You exhale the sound of your own name. It tells the physiology in your body, wait a minute, how anxious can he really be? How fight or flight ridden can he really be? He just took a full set of air into his lungs. He just exhaled, had the presence 
to exhale his own name. Good evening, Lee. Thank you so much for joining us. I was just talking about you a little earlier. Thank you for joining us here at All Natural Being. And then you scan your situation. You sift where you are. And then and only then do you take action. I'll be honest with you. I've been, uh, I've been out in the middle of an adventure, and I've watched somebody run towards the grizzly bear because they were so wound up. They, were, they had no clue. When, they, when you talk about tunnel vision, another reason why I say scan the situation you're in, the other reason that you move your eyes back and forth, again, totally physiological. It's, there's nothing philosophical about the BEST acronym. It's all to trick your body into you using it as opposed to it using you. And if you feel bad, if you think you're being rude, oh, I don't want to trick my body. Yes, you do. In an emergency situation, in an anxious situation, you absolutely want to trick your body. Your body's doing everything it can to flood you with chemicals. You got to go, whoa, right? I'm in charge. Like Alexander Haig I'm in charge until the president's plane lands, right? You got to get in and hijack those chemicals back and remind them that they work for you. You don't work for them. And the reason that you do that is you, you see people, oh, I was petrified. I was so scared. I had tunnel vision. Exactly. Well, making your eyes move back and forth, scanning, B-E-S, scanning the situation you're in, as Rita says, it puts you in control. It shows your physiology that you're not messing around, that you're the one that's going to make everything work. That no matter what fate tries, you're going to square your shoulders. You're not going to be victimized. You're going to bring at the very least, you're going to out the brutal. You're going to bring the counterpunch. And if people say, oh, that's so rude, tough luck. Candace says, I can control my blood pressure machine by relaxing and controlling my breathing. Absolutely. Rita says, breathing is the simplest way to calm yourself down. I absolutely agree. So when it comes to being anxious, when it comes to saying, oh, well, everyone in the United States, everyone is so anxious. It's now a huge cause of disease in our country. All I'm suggesting is try it for 20 minutes. Next time you get 20 minutes, just set your watch or your phone. Does anyone even wear a watch anymore? Set your phone and go, okay, for the next 20 minutes, all I'm going to do is the best acronym. All I'm going to do, now, I don't mean weaponize like weaponize, but I mean weaponize like it's a law enforcement term going, whenever you're in a situation, you weaponize, meaning you gather, you take whatever's around you, right? Whatever you can use in that particular moment in all of time. You take that moment and you go, okay, what is the moment presenting me? What are the fingerprints? What are the latents? You know, what are, what are, what are some of the things that are going down right now that I can use to put my heart's highest priority top of the list? Wayne no. You saw Davy Crockett <laughs> down a bear. Yeah, remember the Daniel Boone when we were, I don't know, Joseph, you might be a lot younger than me, but Daniel Boone when he would throw the hatchet and it would split the tree in half. I remember that right before Zorro. All right. If, if for any of you that don't recognize what Wayne's saying is he's telling me, so here's, talk about reading the tea leaves. He's telling me to make sure, or he's telling me that he's watching the time which is really interesting because the emoji he has is exactly at the bottom of the hour. So is that like a standard emoji, Wayne, or did you just create that? So he's saying to me, oh, I'm watching this time. You better be as well. Kenneth says, I learned deep, breathy, uh, deep breathe, say stuff, <laughs> and laugh instead of blowing up <laughs> and upsetting myself. Absolutely. Good evening, Barth. Nice to see you, brother. Thank you for joining us. Sh Wayne says, sure is. Okay, so now I it wasn't a typo, right? All right. John, I enjoy getting with the flow. It's always been the path of leaf resistance. And John, I would say the very first flow, the very first rhythm to want to jump into is the rhythm of your own breath, your own deep breath. And if still, if that isn't enough, and it's just in terms of a form of meditation, instead of, you know, oh, well, you know, I need something, I need a mantra that I can say, just say thank you. Just cultivate a sense of gratitude for what you have in this particular moment and all of time. I can tell you, and then I've got a minute and 34 seconds left before I get another. <laughs> yes, Joseph, thank you. Please tell Wayne, don't be anxious. Don't be anxious, Wayne. <laughs> yeah, I got to stop long enough to like that one. I'm learning how to do all this. And I, I'm telling you, having hit a hard time, it's just not in me. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. All right, just a thank you would be the perfect mantra. So if you want to meditate, breathe in. Put your lungs through the paces, breathe out, scan the situation that you're in, remind yourself that you can be grateful for the fact that you're here, then you take action. I can tell you, coming up now in just 59 seconds, Wayne's going, oh, there's no way he's going to pull this off. 
Oh, don't forget here in 53 seconds, you'll be able to stick around thinking re-envisioned with Henry and Noel. We'll be coming up right after this, so I guess I should get ready to bail. But I can tell you here, in the last couple of weeks with no he headaches, I am absolutely grateful every moment to have finally beaten the monkey on my back. All right, we're going to go ahead and get out of here so I don't get two sets of clocks and maybe like a punching fist from Wayne. We're going to do this. We'll see you back here tomorrow night, Wednesday, on All Natural Being. Thank you so very much for hanging out with us. We'll see you tomorrow.